I'm Khan and you're watching The Wrath of Minis. However, today is a special day and I happen to have special guest with me, Sergio Calvo. And this gentleman here, well, he is a master miniature painter. And I am just very happy to have him in my presence or from him for me to be in his presence. Or This video is specifically about me learning the special secret techniques of how to paint miniatures. And I'm going to share it with you guys. Actually, he's going to share it with you guys, and I'm going to be here for the ride. If you don't know Sergio, well, lucky you. So Sergio has won uh, the Crystal Brush overall winner four times in a row, which is one of the was one of the top uh, competitions for miniature painting at Adepticon before the Golden Demon kind of came back into the limelight. And of course, that didn't stop you because you decided to win two Golden Demons this year. So that doesn't seem to stop you. It doesn't even matter what competition that you're doing. He just seems to be winning golds and stuff like that. Annoying. I know. Annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Since we have the luxury of Sergio here with us, I figured it would be a great time to ask him some much needed and important questions about how we, as the regular people in the world who just paint miniatures, about how we can approach and become better at painting so that we could at one day have a chance of winning our own very golden demon award. You've been out in the world, seen places, and just picking up awards wherever you go. How do you feel? The truth, um, I'm really proud about everything that I'm getting, not only the awards. I'm mm. really happy to stay here with you, traveling around the world, sharing my knowledge. It's a really pressure uh, for me. And that's the reason why probably I'm here and I will give you some tips that maybe will be incredible for you. You've got three ideas that you think that we should just sort of, as a basic kind of concepts, tackle for people who are hopefully want to improve their miniature painting. And the first one you're thinking about, which is about dark lining, I believe. So what is dark lining when it comes to miniature painting? Okay, that idea doesn't come from me. That idea is designed for Games Workshop, but I changed it the way to apply that black linings or dark linings on your miniatures. The way that Games Workshop give us, it's adding washes, contrast paints, or other fluid colors to create them. Sometimes they have enough depth, enough intensity, enough shadow, but others we don't have enough. So what happened? That is not really sharp, defined your miniature. So that's where I created this kind of process, starting with a dark color in generally, and then trying to increase the light, just going up with more layers that I'm going to explain later. Because if you're talking about or thinking about glazing, sorry, but this is not the perfect place to do it. So to define the black linings, the only thing that you have to do, you have to use a darker color and then increasing just playing with the value, with the contrast, with the saturation, and playing with the temperature. Playing with these three ideas or four ideas, you can get the black line it's well defined and get incredible results. But giving you a really simple advice, it's just starting with a darker color and then increasing with a lighter color. Mm. That's it. The key for the black linings or dark linings, it's draw a super thin line between every element. Just with this, you can win a golden demon. Oof. Well, I better start trying. Um, so when you say about dark lining and, and building up different colors and different temperatures and things like that, this dark lining is literally the line that separates every single element on a model. And you're doing that is it to make, so it's visually easy for us as a as the viewer to understand what we are looking at. Yeah, is that it correct? Is. Yeah. So so these dark lines, they don't have to be specifically black, they nope. could, but they can be the darkest of its kind of its color that it's working in. And you're making it so that these sit in the perhaps the deepest recesses of every part of the model, so that when our eyes watch it or look at that model, everything makes sense right it's it's like being able to visually understand what i'm looking at is that what i'm you explained it way better than me
As miniature painters, many of us are practicing with our brushes and learning brush control, learning to get in proper positions, learning ways in which that we can apply our paint to our models. And one of the most important things that we as painters can learn is paint control. And the question is, of course, what is paint control? And I don't think there's a better person to ask than the man himself. So when you think of paint control, or how you like to explain or talk about it, what is that to you or how do you do it? Okay, probably so fun what I'm going to say, but because a picture is worth a thousand words, okay. I'll show you. Okay, okay, fair. Boom, that's all. Okay, okay, that's, that's it, huh? It's uh -huh. that simple. So what's just happened here? What have you just done? So you've, you've put water into this napkin. Mm -hmm. You've added that water in. Um, and what is the water in the napkin doing? And what have you done there? If you add this, the interesting thing, it's when you will remove the excess of painting in your brass to, is, to, to point it, mm -hmm you won't lose the wet that you have inside of your brush. Okay. If you do it in another place, mm -hmm. we'll absorb really quickly the wet from your brush. That's when the, the, the point of your brush looks dirty or dry. So doing this, you can remove the excess of painting, but having enough wet inside. Mm. So you have the perfect dilution just with this master trick. Yeah, that seems like a really simple, really simple trick. Because it is. That's the way I like to teach. Yeah, simple. Simple. That seems like a great one. So it's all about controlling the amount of paint on your brush because you've got a wet, uh, effectively a wet napkin, and because you're running through that, it can't. It's it will only absorb so much of the liquid or the paint off it because it's already uh, already concentrated with water, right? So you're only removing the paint, not really removing like the the water itself, and then you have a perfectly loaded brush mm -hmm. and pointy and pointy, and we all know we need a pointy brush. So for the third trick, for some reason, it's it's called Cappy Bases? It is, it is. This is a nickname, I presume. It's a nickname that my students told in Spain when I was teaching because I broke the rules and instead of use glazing. You're a, you're a rule breaker? I'm a rule breaker. What? Yeah, I'm, and I'm, I'm, thought, not, a, I'm thought, not a good boy, sorry. I thought, <laughs> I thought you told me that I'm rebellious. <laughs> Uh, I put out of energy with glazing in my past. That's why I don't like my best, my first uh, golden demon because I was using glazing. I don't like the way to teach in this way because for me it don't makes any sense. It's a waste of time. So when I was studying arts and I was working with acrylic, I've discovered that the way that we use on miniatures is completely opposite. So if you want to paint with acrylic, you have to cover the surface first with acrylic. And then once you did it, you have the option to add glazing or other things to have a smoothness mm. on top. But during the process, it's like sculpting. You can't use the sandpaper at the beginning. You have to destroy the piece of rock first and then continue using the hammer to continue destroying. And once you have something that looks like an a face, for example, it's when you will use the sandpaper to have something polished. That's what we have to do with the colors. So because I was using base coating the whole time, my students that they said that I looks like Captain America, I don't know why. But they said that, and they said that I paint with base coating. And they made this funny joke between base coating and Captain America, which we call it Cappy. Mm -hmm. So that's why came the Cappy the bases. bases. Okay, interesting. So hold on, let me, let me see if I got this right. You paint predominantly, so most of the time, in a base coat thickness? Super simple. Like everybody, when they start painting, will do in the same way. So you're telling me you're winning 
golden demons and things, but by painting in base coats. It is, it is. That's the magic about my oh, that's art. That's the magic, okay, okay. But you are obviously must be glazing afterwards, right? Because like, how do you create these smooth blends? Like you're, you're, you're creating, um, you're using these base coats. <laughs> how do you like, because isn't that what the whole point of what glazing kind of is for so many people? Like glazing is adding nuance, adding color, adding shadows and things and smoothing out these, you know, various things to create gradients. How do you create that with cappy bases? That's the funny thing. I don't do. <laughs> 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 That's the funny thing. So you don't have to do it, but in case that you need it for uh -huh. some reasons because you like it, what I do is trying to add a dilution with water and color, just dipping your brush inside of the water and you have like a 50% water and 50% color. Like other people say, like two base coating. Mm -hmm. So probably like two thin coats, two thin coats, for example, or adding two or three base coats to cover. Instead to understand it like covering, I recommend you to paint just with one layer and extend correctly the color. And then in case that you need to add a gradient between layers, it's when you have to add these kind of thin layers. Let me tell you, it's not a thin layer. I'm not talking about glazing, like adding 90% a water and 10% color. I'm talking about 50-50. Like maybe people say like a milk dilution. Milk dilution. Uh, it's so funny because in Spain people talk about this, but I can understand what's the difference between water and milk. So I use that kind of base coating oh, for okay. everything. And at the end, I use my airbrush like sandpaper to add different kind of gradients, blend the layers or add in other tonalities. So what I recommend to use. But in case that you want it, as I said, you don't have to. And usually I don't blend my layers. You can see them. But I like to play with noise. I like to play with textures. Mm. And I create every material in a different point. So maybe for the skin, for example, you have to blend a bit more. But not with the airbrush. It's just with more layers. That mm. means instead of paint only with three layers, maybe you have to add nine layers. And just with the result, will look enough blended. Mm -hmm. And when you have to work with airbrush, you will see like playing with different colors inside of this will work way better because mm -hmm. you are trying to add filters to change, to add more information, just playing with the color instead to try to blend and add a lot of effort blending and blending and blending. I see. I see. I see. Cool. Very cool. That's very my cool, trick very, about very the copy cool. bases. Yeah. I feel like one of the biggest predominant things, uh, tools that you use as a painter, at least that I have noticed, um, is the airbrush. I feel like you are you you utilize the airbrush extremely effectively. You you utilize it to get your main colors down. So you don't just think about it as like priming a model. You don't even prime with it, but like to get your base colors down and to get gradients. You utilize it as a means of of as blending, creating noise. Uh, maybe not. I guess it's noise kind of, but like nuance and variation. You use it as a way to really add color and interest to your models. Is that something that you taught, you just figured it out, you learned it as you went along? Uh, how did that come about that the way that you use the airbrush? I feel like like oh, it's almost like a glaze, you know, with an airbrush. And like, how did that come about? Okay, the difference for me about glazing mm -hmm. or how I understand glazing means trying to add a gradient between every layer to don't show the layers. Mm -hmm. But something funny about my artworks, you can see the layers. Mm -hmm. you, can, you will see the layering. The difference is like, for example, here with the lights that you use, you have turquoises on your face. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the same I use with my artworks. Mm -hmm. I try to use filters with colors to change. With these changes, I play with the shapes, mm -hmm. I play with temperatures, I create deeper shadows, I try to emphasize elements, mm -hmm. That's what I use. That's okay. why I said that I'm not glazing on my artworks. I, I try to add filters to increase the level of colors or increase the level of temperature or the saturation mm -hmm. or get something different in case that I need it. Mm. But the problem came from the beginning of all this. You have two ways to work, like a miniature painter or like an artist. I choose a mix with both. So what I try to do with my airbrush it's try to move more to an artistic point view mm -hmm. than a miniature point view. Mm. That's what I do with my airbrush. But the airbrush, it's only 5% of my artwork. Right. Then 95 is the brush. Yeah. That's what I teach always. Mm. I teach the airbrush for yeah. sure because it's necessary, it's yeah. important. It's the, the, the magic trick at the yeah, end of the process. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the end of the journey. Yeah. But it's true yeah. that if you don't know well how to work with the brush, yeah. 
you could be the master with airbrush, but at the end, your miniatures won't look like should be. Right. I have been a student of uh, Sergio for some time now, and I have learned a lot from his work. Um, his artwork that he shows on Instagram is phenomenal. Uh, his social media platforms showcase so much of his work, so much of his process, so much of his thoughts and ideas about the things, and is probably one of the premier miniature painters of our time. Maybe that's, you know, different opinions to different people and what you like and what you don't like. That's fine. If you guys want to learn more about Sergio, well, who better to ask than Sergio? Sergio, how can we find more information about you? Okay, so let me tell you ideas about how to find me. It's true that I'm traveling around the world. I was in Asia, Europe, America, probably more or less everywhere. I need to go to South America and a few places more. I'm really happy about this. I'm traveling around the world teaching the people, uh, sharing my knowledge. But if you can't or wherever I can go to your country or wherever, I recommend you sign up to my Patreon channel, not because I want your money. It's because it's where I created my online academy. So it's where I'm going to share everything about my knowledge, color theory, color recipes, how to paint non-metallic metals, how I paint the skin, how I create all these environments, how I create everything. That's the platform that we choose to create my online academy. So that's what we try to offer. If you want to push yourself to the highest level, for sure, this one is your place. I'm trying to share some videos on YouTube and other social medias to help everybody to improve because always I would like to help everybody. But it's true that the value that I put on that Patreon channel, you won't find another place because I'm trying to do the best. And we work in there more than five years. I started teaching like six or seven years ago and I didn't stop. So I continue teaching. I'm trying to push myself as teacher and as a painter. So always in trying to find the best way to communicate with the student and help them, giving them tools and explain them what ideas or what kind of things are better for their models, always helping them with their own style. Unless you have a dry brush and then he'll destroy it. And dry brush, it's the key for everything. <laughs> and washes, it's the key. <laughs> Disclaimer, I want... <laughs> All right. <laughs> what happened? I'm just getting rid of your fuzz. Whatever, there you go. God. How do you feel touching a Golden Demo winner? Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, terrible. <laughs> Filthy. <laughs>